Um, we are doing rational exponents. There are rational exponent rules, and these rules help us simplify a lot of things, okay? So we have the rational exponent rule. If you have an exponent that's a fraction, it's just another way of writing a radical with a root and a exponent. So think about trees. Where are your roots? Bottom. At the bottom. So guess what N stands for? Your root. It's the root of your radical. Okay? So if that's the root, that means M is your exponent. Okay? So if I have B to the 3 over 2, what's my root? 2. two. So it's a square root of B to the 3rd power which can be simplified, but we're not gonna worry about all that right now. Right now we're just worried about setting it up. Yes? Does that make sense? Okay, so roots are on the bottom. Okay, product rule. Um, we actually talked about the product rule yesterday in your notes um, on number one. So if you look at number one, didn't we separate it as multiplication? because they were all square root. So you can also go backwards. If they're separated, you can put them together as long as they have the same root. Now, if one of them is a cube root, one of them is a square root, can you put those together? No, because it's not the same root. So this only works when the roots match, yes? So you can put them together, you could take them apart, either way, yeah? Same, co or so for example, let's look. So if we have cube root of six times the cube root of three, what would that equal? Well, they're both cube roots, so I can put them together. And what's 6 times 3? 18. 18. So you can put them together when they have the same root. Okay, quotient rule we also talked about yesterday. Um, we talked about it on number 3 of the practice. We did this problem, right? We separated. Now, my word of advice is do not separate unless you can't simplify. 27 over 64 did not simplify. That's why we separated, yes? Mm -hmm. But if it simplifies, simplify first, yeah? Because that's going to make your life way easier with smaller exponents, smaller numbers. So if they're separated and you can simplify them, put them together so you can simplify, okay? And I'll show you all examples of that here in a second. Evidence. So if we look at this first one, it says rational exponent rule. Change the exponential form. Exponential just means it has an exponent, yes? To radical form, so we want radicals. Well, which number is my root? Two. And which number is my exponent? One. Now, do I have to label a square root with a two? No. Do I have to label an exponent with one? No. So is this the same thing as this? Yes. Yes. So these are the same thing. So if you wrote it this way, am I going to count off? Maybe. No, I'm not. And if you write it this way, I'm also not going to count off. But you have to understand that they are the same. Okay, so look at example two. What's my root? Five. And then my exponent is two. Does five go into two? No, so this is simplified form. That's my answer. Okay, what is my root? Three. three. And what's my exponent? Five. Now, does three go into five? Yeah. How many times? Once. One, two, three, four, five. So it can go into it one time with what left over? Two. So a squared. So that's my simplified form. Something's making a noise over here and it's going to drive me crazy. Okay, look at example four. It says change the radical form. So it's in a radical right now. It's got the roots. Okay, to exponential form. So now I'm going backwards. So we went from here to here. Now we're going to go from here to here. So what is my root? Four. And what would my exponent be if there is no exponent? One. So it's just t to the one-fourth. Now, if you look back at the rule for example five, 
Remember, it could be outside the exponent, it could be outside the parentheses or inside the parentheses, it doesn't matter. So what is my fraction here? Three, seven, seven, seven over three. Seven. Remember, roots are on the bottom. <clears throat> hmm? Yes. So last one, what is my exponent? Five over two. Now, will you always see a 2 here when it's a square root? So I want you to realize that just this gives you that. If there's not a number, we put a 2. Yes? Okay. Because we don't have to label a square root. Now, four of your questions on your assessment on Monday are that. On assessments, can you use your notes? Yeah. Can you ask your teacher questions? Yes. Do you get to pick a partner? Yes. Okay, so you have all those options as well. Yes? Cool. Okay, look at example seven. I'm going to do example seven by hand because I want you to understand the why. And then, do we have to do these by hand? No. However, what if they gave us an ugly decimal? What if they gave us a decimal that couldn't turn into a fraction? Then would I have to do it by hand? Yes, because I would have to factor tree it and simplify. Yes? Okay. Now, I will tell you today, you don't have to do that on any of the numbers because I wanted you to focus on the rules and not simplifying. Yes? Okay. So knowing that on this one, my root is 3. And I can write it like this or like this. Both are acceptable. Both follow the rule. Okay? Well, what is 8 squared? 64. Well, is 64 a perfect cube? Yes, if you look on your paper. Okay, 64 is 4 cubed. So I know that the cube root of 64 is what? 4. And the reason we don't put the cube is because the cube root canceled that cube. And that's why it's just 4. Okay, so I want to show you that these will give you the same answer. Now, do you have to do two ways every time? No, but I want you to understand that they both work. 8 is also a perfect cube. I know that 8 cubed, the cube root, sorry, the cube root of 8 is 2. And what's 2 squared? 4. So does it matter which method you follow? No. Now, on the other ones. When you don't have a letter, you can literally type it in the calculator the exact way you see it. So parentheses, 256 over 625 to the negative 3 fourths power. What did that give me? Now, I want you to realize you can make this a fraction by doing alpha y equals enter or just write it as division. Okay, it's up to you. Both will work. Um, I also want you to see that it didn't give me an ugly decimal, so I was able to do it. Now, if it ever gives you an ugly decimal, you can hit math and do fraction and see if it'll turn it into a fraction. But if it doesn't, that means you have to break it down by hand. Okay. Now, also... Um, do y'all know how to do a power to any, like any power? It's this little arrow up thing. Yes? That's what helps you put it to a power. Cool? Okay, look at example 9. Type it just the way you see it. So negative 49 to the 3 over 2 power. I get negative 343. Now, if I type this one the exact way I see it, what did it tell me? What's the error message? Non-real answer. What do you think non-real answer means? What did we learn yesterday? Imaginary. So if it says non-real, it's because it's not real, which means it's imaginary. Okay, so knowing that, well, look, is my root even? Yeah, your root's 2. 
Are we allowed to have negatives when we have an even root? No. no. So we have to make it positive and take out the i. Now can I type it in my calculator without the negative? Yes. yes. And it gave me 343. So what's my answer? Three. Let's put the number in front, but I wouldn't count it wrong if you did it backwards. Any questions with that? Yeah, but you have to take out either a negative or an I, depending on what it is. Now, I want you to realize the difference between these two. So they're both the same thing, just one had parentheses and one didn't. If I put this in form, the negative would have been on the outside. And it would have looked like that. That's why this one just came out negative and it was fine. Because yes, it's a square root, but the negative was on the outside. Due to the parentheses here, it would have been on the inside, which is why it was imaginary. Does that make sense? Okay. So flip to the back. Okay. This is where your laws of exponents are going to be your best friend because you're going to use them. So does anybody remember what rule this is? What would we do with the exponents? This is power to a power. Power to a power is what? What do you do? Yes, multiply exponents. You multiply the exponents for power to a power. So when you have parentheses with a power or an exponent on the outside, top right, then you're doing power to a power and you're multiplying. Now, the 256 doesn't have an exponent, but if I wanted to give it one, can I put a one? Mm -hmm. Yes. So when I multiply, what's 3 fourths times one? Yeah, just 3 fourths. And then I have x to the 16th, but what's 3 fourths times 16? Mm. Well, I'm not asking you all to know that by yourself. Well. 3 fourths times 16 is 12. So is that even a fraction anymore? So due to following the laws of exponents, the nice thing is I don't even have to mess with the x anymore because I know the answer is going to be x to the 12th. But I don't know what this equals. So I can type it in my calculator, and if it gives me a pretty number, then I'm done, right? Okay, so if we do 256 to the 3 over 4 power, we get 64. And now I'm done. Mm -hmm, because when I multiplied, that's what it equaled, so we're done. Now, if it was a fraction, I would have to do something with it, but it's not. Okay, so here we have division. Um, I could separate, but I don't want to, because I want to see if it simplifies first. So what's my law of exponent with division? What do you do to exponents when you're dividing? Subtract exponents. Okay, so I know that I'm keeping my cube root. What's 81 divided by 3? 27. 27. Where are there more m's? Top. Top, and we subtract. So 4 minus, there's no exponent, so 1. What's 4 minus 1? And then n to the 12th, is there another n to simplify that with? No. So it just stays n to the 12th. Do I even need a fraction bar anymore? No. no. So we're good. Didn't that make it look easier? Yes. Already looks easier. Now, I could turn these into fractions, but if I can simplify without doing that, is it worth it? No. What is the cube root of 27? If we're not sure, we can hit math 4, because that's the cube root, and do 2, 7, so it equals 3. You could have also looked at your chart. Okay. Now, does 3 go into 3? How many times? Did it have a remainder? No. 3 goes into 3 one time. Does 3 go into 12? How many times? There's your answer. Now, if you need to draw out your letters, is that okay? 3 was once. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 12, there was four groups of three with no leftovers. That's why we don't have a house anymore. Okay? Any questions with those two? Okay, so let's look at the next group. Because three goes into three 
one time. Okay, so look at example 13. What's happening here? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division between the A's? It's multiplication. And when we multiply, we add exponents. Now, remember, when you're adding fractions, what do they have to have? The same denominator. Do these already have the same denominator? Yes. yes, so I could do it by hand. I could also type in the calculator. Doesn't matter on this one because they already have a common denominator. What if they didn't have a common denominator? Do you really want to make a common denominator and do all that? No. Do you think your calculator cares if they have a common denominator? No. So if they don't already, you can just type the fractions in your calculator and add them. Yes? So what is 2 thirds plus 5 thirds? 7 thirds. 7 thirds. Now, what, that doesn't simplify, right? 7 over 3 does not simplify. So what's my root? Three. Oh. And what's my power? Okay, if there's leftovers, which this one does, like this one wasn't pretty, so we have to put it back in radical form. Now, does this simplify? Yeah. Yes, because I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 3 goes into 7 how many times? Yeah. Twice. So I get to take a squared out. And how many do I have left over? 1. Kind of. Any questions on that one? Now, this one's kind of gross. We have power to a power, which we have to get rid of first so we can get rid of our parentheses, right? This is where your calculator is your best friend. 1 eighth times negative 2. Okay, nah. if you don't type it as a fraction, it doesn't give it to you as a fraction. I was trying to be lazy. Then negative 2. You're right. I'm just showing you. Okay, so it is negative 1 fourth. So I know that this becomes a to the negative 1 fourth. Then I have 1 eighth times 3, which if I type in my calculator, gives me 3 eighths. Everybody okay with what I've done? Multiply, multiply. Because we're literally just following this power to a power rule again. Okay. Now on the bottom, this is a negative 1 fourth. Um, the negative and the fraction bar kind of blend in, but it is a negative, I promise. So what's negative 1 fourth times negative 3? Well, two negatives makes A. And then that gives you 3 fourths. Now B doesn't have an exponent, so it's technically a 1. Negative 1 fourth times 1 is negative 1 fourth. Now, there's a couple different rules we could follow. Okay, we could just go straight into the division rule and subtract. We can move our negatives and add. What do y'all want to do? They're both kind of the same. So we know that when we have negatives, they have to move, yes? Okay, so if I have a negative exponent on top, I move it to the bottom, and it becomes a to the positive one-fourth. Now, if I have a next negative exponent on bottom, did I just say I moved that one to the top? I moved it to the bottom. I'm losing my mind. Okay, and I get negative one-fourth, so positive one-fourth. Now, do I have any more negative exponents? And do you notice that B's are on the same level and the A's are on the same level? So that means we're multiplying now. So what do we do when we multiply? We add our exponents. So I have B... And I have 3 over 8 plus 1 fourth. And that gives me 5 eighths. And then I have 1 fourth plus 3 fourths. Well, these have common denominators. So, oh, sorry, that's an A. There's more A's. They're all the A's are on the bottom. 1 plus 3 is 4. What's 4 divided by 4? One. If you would have added them in your calculator, it would have also told you one. So now knowing this, I, it's simplified. So I have to write this back as a radical. A, I don't because A doesn't have a fraction. So A is on my denominator. What's my root? 
And what's my exponent? Does 8 go into 5? So there's my answer. I added 1 fourth plus 3 fourths. Okay, the rest of them aren't, aren't like that. Okay, look at example 15. Does 10 go into 5? No. Does 10 go into 15? Yes. But I'm going to show you an easier way. When the uh, exponent is big, or the root is bigger than an exponent, you can always try to write it as a fraction. We get 5 over 10, 15 over 10. Do those simplify? Mm -hmm. What's 5 over 10 simplify to? Mm -hmm. No. One half. Okay. Now, if you're not good at simplifying fractions, can you type in your calculator as a fraction and it will simplify it for you? Yes. Okay, so for example, alpha y equals enter. If we have 15 over 10, it simplifies to 3 over 2. Yes? Okay, so I know that this is b, 3 over 2. Do they still have the same root? Yes. So I can put them back under a square root together. It's a to the first power and b to the third power. Now it's a square root. Does 2 go into 1? No. So I know that A just stays. Does 2 go into 3? Yes. How many times? One time and has how many left over? One. Almost done. Okay, look at example 16. Do they have the same root? The roots are the same? 6, 2, 5? No. So can we put them under one house together? No, because they have to have the same root to go under one house. So I'm going to write them as fractions. Now, if there's no exponent, it's a 1. So this is 1 6 times x to the 1 3rd times x to the 2 fifths. When we're multiplying, what is my law of exponents? They do because we're going to add them, but does the calculator care if the denominators match? No. So I can literally in my calculator, alpha y equals enter, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 plus 2 over 5. And it gives me 9 over 10. So I just made them combine. Does 9 over 10 simplify? No. no. What's my root? Mm -hmm. And what's my exponent? Mm -hmm. Does 10 go into 9? No. So we're done. Last one is super similar. Okay. Thank you. Um, this one, though, is going to be division. So I'm going to rewrite it as fractions because they are not the same root, so I cannot combine them under one house. So I get a to the 1 fourth over a to the 1 fifth. Now, which number is bigger? Where are there more a's? We did 1 fourth and 1 fifth because there's no exponent, so it's 1. Root is 4. 1. Root is 5. There's more on top, but if you're unsure, if the fractions are like crazy, you could do 1 divide 4, and that's 0.25, and you could do 1 divide 5, and that's 0.2 if you put a 0. So what's more, 25 cents or 20 cents? 25, so this is more. Hold on really fast. So what do I do when I'm dividing? We subtract. So we have alpha y equals enter, 1 fourth minus alpha y equals enter 1 fifth and I get a to the 1 20th. Does 1 over 20 simplify? What is my root? And what is my exponent? Do I have to put a 1? If I put a 1, am I wrong? No. You're weird, is that what you said? You can put a 1 and not be weird, I promise. Okay, I'm going to look at one of them on the notes with you, or the practice, just because I want to talk about something really fast. In the...
by the sanitizer. Look at number three. Power to a power, we're going to multiply. 216 doesn't have an exponent, so we give it a 1. So negative 2 thirds times 1 is just negative 2 thirds, right? Anything times 1 is itself. Now, negative 2 thirds times 3, you can do in your calculator. And it equals negative 2. Now, am I allowed to have negative exponents? No. Is this already a fraction? So I'm going to make it a fraction. Now, I'm going to bring my, they're on negative on the top, so when I move them to the bottom, what do they become? Positive. positive. So this is negative on the top. When I move it to the bottom, it becomes positive. Now, my top is empty. What do I have to put up there? one so I have one over I know x squared is not going to change because it's positive and it's not a fraction but I don't know what 216 to the two-thirds power is is it a pretty number yes so it's just 36 okay so that went through a couple people off last period I just wanted to cover it with y'all so this is what you're working on